Hello and welcome to this series on introduction to hand calcs. Today we are going to be discussing scatter factors. And we can start with what a scatter factor actually is. In essence, it's a term terms that account for the scatter contribution to the total dose. If you recall from a previous video, I mentioned that the total dose in a hand calc could be broken into three parts. You have the contribution from primary dose and you also have contribution from scatter, both from the collimator and from the phantom. And because of that, there are really three scatter factors that we consider in a hand calculation. We have the collimator scatter, the phantom scatter, and then the previous two can be multiplied together to form the total scatter factor. So let's start with the collimator scatter factor, or SC. So the definition of the collimator scatter factor is shown here. It's just a ratio of doses that are measured in air, one with the uh, field size equal to R sub C and the other equal to the field size of R sub ref. And this is kind of the geometry that we're dealing with. So the collimator scatter factor is always measured at SAD, which is shown there. And you measure it with a small buildup cap to kind of mitigate the effects of the buildup region. And you see the reference field size in red and the collimated field size is the black dotted lines. And I just defined a few terms on the left here. So the SAD is the source to access distance. R sub C is the collimator defined field size, and R sub ref is the uh, field size that is used during the calibration of the given linear accelerator. Now, if you measure the collimator scatter factor for multiple field sizes, you'll get a plot that looks something like this. For field sizes that are left than that reference field, you can see that the collimator scatter factor is less than one, but for field sizes greater than the reference field size, that collimator scatter actually increases above one. And by definition, the uh, collimator scatter factor for the reference field is 1. So what does the collimator scatter factor actually represent? Well, it represents the scatter that emanates from the treatment head, which contributes to the total dose at the calculation point. So it represents the scatter that emanates from the collimators themselves. And the scatter profile is largely Gaussian in shape with respect to the central axis. So the intensity of scattered radiation at the central axis is higher than at points off axis. And this is largely due to the presence of the flattening filter. And I will show you an example of this right now. So on the left here, you have a plot of the collimator scatter factor for a 6x versus a 6x flattening filter free beam. And on the right is the schematic of the LINAC treatment head. And so you can see that the uh, scatter factor for the 6x flattening filter free beam is a little bit flatter than for the 6x flattened beam. And if you look over on the right here, you can kind of see why that flattening filter is right in the beam path and it's you know accounting for a lot of that scatter. Uh, but when you remove it, uh, you still can get some scattering off the collimators and whatnot, but it's less of an effect because that flattening filter is actually pulled out. And with this schematic, you can really see how there would be a field size dependence for the collimator scatter factor, since as you close those jaws, less and less scattered radiation is able to get through, and so it makes sense that we see this field size dependence. Okay, so now we can go ahead and talk about the total scatter factor, or SCP, and this is the definition of it here. It's a ratio of doses, one with field size R, defined at a depth of D naught in the phantom, the other with field size R ref, also defined at depth D naught, and it's also defined as the product of the collimator and phantom scatter factors. The collimator scatter, which I introduced on the previous uh, slide, and the phantom scatter I haven't introduced yet, and you'll see why in a moment, but on the right here is the geometry that we deal with um, when we measure the total scatter factor. So it's measured at SAD and at a reference depth, and it's just a ratio of the doses measured with this collimated field size, which is the black dotted line, and then the reference field size, which is in red. And a couple notes about the reference depth. Um, typically it's taken to be D max. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but typically it is. So what does the total scatter factor represent? Well, as the name suggests, it represents the total scatter that contributes to the dose at the point of interest. And scatter can come from the treatment head and from the phantom. So this represents the total scatter from both of those sources. And as we increase our jaw setting, it makes intuitive sense that more scatter from the collimators can get through um, 
So as you increase your draw setting, you have more scatter radiation coming from the treatment head. Same goes for the phantom being irradiated. As you increase your draw setting, you are creating more scatter radiation in the phantom, and therefore you get a greater contribution at the point of interest. Now we can go ahead and talk about the phantom scatter factor, and the reason that I wanted to introduce this last is because there's no way to directly measure this. So there's no way to differentiate a photon that originates in the phantom from one that originates in the treatment head. And because of that, uh, we actually measure the total scatter factor with the setup shown on the right. And then we determine the phantom scatter factor by dividing out the contribution to the total scatter factor from the treatment head. And this is what you see here. So it is a factor that we use in our hand calculations, but we can't directly measure it. We have to determine it in this way, but we can use it uh, once we actually determine what it is. So this here shows all of the scatter factors superimposed on the same plot, and you can see that the field size dependence is definitely largest for the total scatter factor because it's a product of the other two, and you can also nicely see the relative contributions from each of the individual scatter factors on this plot. So what's the reason why we need to separate the collimator scatter factor from the phantom scatter factor? And there's a few situations that make this clear. One of these situations is if we have an extended SSD. This would increase the amount of phantom that is being irradiated due to beam divergence, but the collimator setting doesn't change. So we need to account for that differential volume by uh, using a different field size for the phantom scatter factor. On the flip side, the volume of the phantom being irradiated might be less than what is actually defined by the collimator setting. In this case, we would have, you know, a block or an MLC shaping so that the field size at the surface of the phantom is actually less than what the collimator set. And so because of this, we use two different field sizes when defining the collimator and phantom scatter factors. The collimator scatter factor is dictated by the jaw setting, while the phantom scatter is dictated by any blocking or MLC field shaping that may be present in the beam path. Another instance where the field sizes used are different would be if the size of the phantom being irradiated is smaller than the actual collimator setting. And here's an instance where that would be the case. This is an example breast tangent field. Uh, so you can see that there's really only tissue in part of the field, in which case you would only use the size of that tissue in the field for your phantom scatter factor. So this is just another example of where you, uh, why we need to separate these two factors. And that's all I have on scatter factors, so I will see you in the next video.